Hi, this is Guinevere Turner, uh, writer-director of the movie Creeps. I'm here with Sean Evans at Back to the Movies. Joining us on Back to the Movies today is the lovely Guinevere Turner, writer of the movie American Psycho. How are you today, Guinevere? I am lovely. Fantastic. That's very good to hear. Now, you are fundraising for an independent film called Creeps. Now, could you tell everybody out there who's watching this what Creeps is all about? Creeps is a movie about two best friends who um, decide that they, they need to look amazing and fantastic for an event. And so th they realize the only way they can really do that is by not doing drugs or drinking for a week, and which is, you know, their common practice. So uh, they decide to um, try to abstain for a week, and it just takes place in a week of this friendship in which they fail miserably. And then it all ends at this event in art opening where they make complete disasters of themselves and they you know, their friendship uh, almost falls apart and uh, they, you know, just make a mess of themselves. <laughs> now, with you saying that they with the got um, drink and drug problems, I mean, the concept of the film is very unusual, maybe with even a, a dark comedy element thrown in there. Now, where did the inspiration come from to write this movie? Oh, it just doesn't come from anyone I know. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, the inspiration comes from, I actually wrote the, the story that the script is based on with uh, my best friend, um, and we just decided, well, what, we really, what we're really thinking is that, that, that gay and lesbian LGBTQI films uh, have um, largely been invested in the last year, in the last decade or so, rather, to, in making gay people seem good and normal and lovely and um, it, this is sort of the answer to all of that that I, I personally have worked so hard to do to say that we actually are um, stupid messy assholes just like everyone else okay. <laughs> and that's an, a, a nice approach of it then now independent <laughs> films are something of a speciality for yourself now what is it about indie films that really grabs your attention and uh, do you think indie films are becoming as good or better than their studio counterparts? Well, the amazing thing that, that has happened since I started doing it in 1994 is that, um, doing it meaning indie, independent film, <laughs> is that, you know, the, the digital revolution. And uh, I know from all of my friends who are film programmers that the number of films that have been that are being made now are is exponential. I mean, the Sundance Film Festival. When I, you know, in '94, I was in the at uh, the Sundance Film Festival with my film Go Fish. They probably get a mm, um, hundred times more submissions than they do than they did back then because people because it's easier to do now, and so more people are making films. And indie film has become went from being the thing to do to being oh no, it's you know, the films don't get shown in theaters anymore. So it's gone up and then it's gone down uh, in terms of uh, whether or not it can actually be in a theater. That's the thing that's changed, is that being in a theater is uh, now uh, much, much more difficult, and we see a lot fewer independent films in theaters. Right. Uh, it definitely leaves the, the creativity open there for the filmmakers, though. I mean, with you saying it's not being shown on theatres, there still is that creative option to get your film out there via other means. I mean, with the things like video on demand and Amazon and things like that, do you think that's enhancing um, the kind of awareness of independent film, or do you feel as though indie film should be on the theatres where it belongs? No, I mean, it belongs everywhere now. There are just so many more new platforms. Um, so now... Uh, at least in America, you you know, a film is available on iTunes at the same time that it comes out in the theater, which is great. Um, the only sad part, for me anyway, is that we don't have, as much as we used to, we don't have the collective film going experience, meaning 
one of the fun parts of seeing a film of any kind is, for me, has always been to be in a room full of people who also chose to be there. But now we can say, oh, I could go to the theater or I could watch it on iTunes and be able to pause it and be able to go and, you know, have a drink, have some popcorn, uh, you know, at my leisure. So I think it's a, it's a good thing. It's a great thing that films can be seen in so many different ways now. But it's a, but it's a, it's a, it's a, a loss to me because we don't have the collective film viewing experience in the way that we used to. And to me, especially being gay, that used to be, uh, you know, outside of gay bars and clubs, that used to be a great way to be in a room full of like-minded people that you might want to date. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's free for pickings there. I mean, if you go into the theater, I mean, the option's there for you. I mean, you can pick up a nice lady while you're there. Exactly. And, and you know, I always say, when people say, oh, I don't, you know, I don't have a girlfriend. I, you know, I, I don't know where to meet people. I, you know, I don't, I don't drink or I don't like to go to bars. I would say, you know, the, the best place is a film festival or a movie that you love or that you think you might like because, you know, you'll be in a room full of people who feel that way too or are dedicated enough to go somewhere. So that, we, we've lost that a little bit. But I have a question for you, Sean. Go for it. Why back to the movies? I mean, I get that it's a back to the future reference, but why? Wh what What does back to the movies mean to you? Why Why is your site called that? Uh, basically, I mean, back to the future was quite a big influence on me growing up. And I mean, I've always had a passion for movies and back to the future stood out as probably one of my all time favorite films. And I mean, uh, no idea. I mean, it just came to me one day. Why not back to the movies? I'm working in the movies. I'm always going back to them and rewatching them. I'm always going back to other people and helping them with things. It's sort of kind of, uh, I don't know, it's kind of random and crazy. And uh, I mean, previously what you were just on about with them. Um, going to the theatre and meeting people, I, I had a question for you, or more of a, an idea as well. I mean, um, do you think with 21st century technology coming on board and the fact that everything's going online, do you think Netflix would ever do something as though you could meet people who are watching the film at the same time as you, like a webcam chat, so you could have that sort of online meeting rather than a physical presence within a theatre? I wonder if something like that would come in the near future. I don't know. Would you would you do that? I I feel like if I'm in my home I don't really want to be presented. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously there's that option, but I mean for people who, <laughs> who are out there, maybe you can have some sort of picture in picture thing where you could have a debate with somebody online while the film is playing or something weird like that. I, I imagine something like that would maybe come in in the near future. I mean, yeah, that I mean, it seems like that would be the obvious next step, yeah. I mean, maybe you should invent that so you can um you know, become a millionaire. Yeah, I like the sound of that. As soon as you said millionaire, I'll start writing some stuff down. <laughs> right, so Creeps has nearly raised $8,000, which is fantastic, already in its first few days. And there's a target to hit of $200,000. Now, what perks are available to backers to entice them to donate to the movie? Do you hear that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> One moment, please. While the city of Los Angeles um, interrupts me. I've got all that to come next Thursday. <laughs> Is that a fire truck or a police car? Or uh, it's a fire truck. And yeah, it sounded more. Luckily, fire passing truck. my home, so it's nothing's on fire here. Um, what we have some of the perks that I like are um, that you can have your pet in the movie, um, which I feel is a you know an original idea. Yeah. Uh, so you could put, have your pet in the movie, and there are several. Um, moments in the film where, where the dogs are prevalent. I'm a huge fan of dogs. Um, we also have, um, there's a, a lot of the, the, several scenes in the movie take place in the bathroom in clubs and so you could uh, do some kind of graffiti on a wall and have that be in the film which is uh, very cool. And, uh, and also we have a character in the film who takes place of every, uh, who takes photos rather of every sexual conquest that she has and um, she has them all on a wall in the film. And so I am inviting people to, uh, you know, take a picture of themselves and have them be on the wall. Which, uh, and I do encourage nudity for that. Fantastic. I mean, so stand there, <laughs> thumbs up, butt naked and be shown on a film. That's fantastic. 
That's really cool. I like that idea. Now, <laughs> I noticed like when I Google search the film, you already have a wide press presence online and a very organized website along with lots of articles written about the film already. How has the film taken off so quickly? It's really impressive to see that and um, you must have a really great team behind you working on the movie. I have an amazing team. I have um, my producer, Valeria Lopez, and then I have five um, interns who are working and doing all of that, the social media stuff, which is uh, really, um, it's just impressive. I love, I, I, they're, they're teaching me so much about social media. And, you know, obviously, uh, when I was, when I made my first film, Go Fish, we didn't even have cell phones or email. And now social media is absolutely the way that you raise awareness, raise money, um, uh, create sort of a culture around the film. Uh, and that's uh, essential to to raising money now to make a film it's it's i mean you you have to you have to already sort of um have a brand before you even i mean what this is like pre 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 production but it feels like production exactly um, yeah it, in a good way in an amazing way and it's made me actually uh, you know become aware of I, I mean the i'm so excited because the comedian margaret cho uh recently I just reached out to her because we have mutual friends and said, would you be willing to be part of, we're doing a staged reading of the, the script during the campaign to be a part of it. And I thought, oh, it's a long shot, Margaret Cho. And she just wrote back, oh my God, I love you. I'm a huge fan. You know, I, she started following me on Twitter. She just, you know, um, all about it and, and we'll do anything to support the film. And I also really love that about this process is that you, I'm connecting with people that I didn't even know knew who I am, uh, who are just lovely and supportive. And she, I'm, I'm going on Margaret's uh, podcast uh, next week, and she's just, you know, in it to win it for Creeps, which is kind of amazing. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you about social media. I think it's kind of really blown the independent market, especially fundraising and crowdfunding. It's really blown it out there into a more public presence. I mean, without social media, Indiegogo and Kickstarter wouldn't be as big as they are today without people spreading the word, without people going online and checking out all these campaigns. So, yeah, I mean, if anybody out there is thinking of setting up a campaign, then you need a strong social media presence to, to really get it out there into public awareness. So it's a, it's a really good tool to have it really is it's really um, I, I, I did an interview recently where somebody asked me you know if if this had all been available when you made go fish do you think you'd be using Indiegogo um, and I I'm like that is such a weird crazy if because it's hard to even imagine if you had tried to explain all of this to me when I was 24 I would have I just, I, I would have just, it would have been a big blank. I would have been like, wait, what happens now? Everybody gets on machines and and talks about their lives and posts things about what they're eating. I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> I still wonder why people do that today. Never mind all the way and then many years ago. I mean, uh, I mean, it amazes me how much social media has taken off. I mean, I don't particularly want to see pictures of people's food, but there we go. I mean, people must like doing it. And I mean, I think I've done it once before, but it was a pretty impressive burger, so I had to show it. But aside from that, I mean, I don't see the point. No. I mean, I, I, I never, I never, I try to um, limit my social media presence to uh, not not the uh, the mundane day to day. I try to you know either something funny that I've seen, something funny that I'm thinking, or a, a funny picture of myself from days of yore. <laughs> Other than that, I just really I try to not say, uh, especially not. Um, I'm feeling really sad, but I had a great cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really strange. I, I think I saw a post the other day. Someone's like, "Someone, I'm really sad." come and cheer me up so you're expecting the world wide web to come and cheer you up with <laughs> like flowers at the door and cards and chocolate no no nobody cares <laughs> just, just... I, you know what it's really great for is playlists like what I was trying to a friend was moving to Los Angeles and I wanted to really encourage her and so I asked every, I asked my you know 5,000 Facebook friends to um, tell me uh, great songs about Los Angeles and it was just you know, a flurry of, I mean, I mean, an amazing playlist that was all songs about LA. It was great. It's really good for stuff like that. Oh yeah, definitely good for stuff like that. But uh, I mean, people take advantage of it for a nice attention seeking. I mean, if you're down in the dumps one day, let's post the post out there and see your replies. See who cares about me sort of thing. 
And I always say, if I die, if please, please do not post anything about how sad you are that I died on Facebook. Like that's just to me that's disrespectful. <laughs> Yeah, well, you never know. God might be hooked up. He might have Facebook up there. You never know. <laughs> and then my, and I'm like, if you want me to get into heaven, please like this page of, of the fact that I died. Exactly. Yeah, you have to be accepted onto an events page before you can get into heaven. <laughs> totally. I totally agree with you there. Now, I mean, if the $200,000 from Creeps is met, where do you see the future of the film going? Will it be straight to DVD release? Will you be targeting festivals? Uh, what are your plans for the distribution of the film? Oh, I'm... Just, you know, dream big and hope that it will happen, that it will be in theaters and, and um, in festivals and, you know, around the world. I, um, I mean, I understand that the, the subject matter is controversial, not so much because it's gay, because the two main characters are gay and most of their friends are gay. Um, they have a token straight friend who they make fun of. Um, uh, I realize that it's 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 also about uh, unlikable characters in a way, quote unquote, unlikable characters. But you know, so is American Psycho. One of the huge uh, things that we encountered, we being me and the director, when trying to get American Psycho made, is people said Patrick Bateman, who's the lead character, uh, is not he's not a sympathetic character. And we're like, uh, yeah, he's a serial killer. So if that's a sympathetic character, then <laughs> well, and the thing is. It, it it gives me hope and validation because actually it's a pretty popular movie and he's not a likable character but you're weirdly with him for the journey because he's you know he's compelling in his own way so for so I, for me I just dream big I hope it's in movie theaters I know it'll be on iTunes um, and Netflix and I mean by the time we make it there'll probably be whole new platforms that I can't even imagine yeah, I mean, who knows what the future holds. And I mean, I do have some interesting news for you. I mean, I was speaking to Valerie about this because I, I was there waiting to see what your response was. I've never seen it, American Psycho. It's still on my list of films to see. You've never seen it. I've never seen American How Psycho. How old are you? I'm 22. Oh, you are very young. So you have sort of an excuse because you're... Um... Well, because you were five when it came out. <laughs> still, still not a good enough excuse, though. I mean, I think I definitely need to see it. I mean, um, I, I think it's definitely going to be a film I'm going to put on my Mac for my in-flight entertainment this Thursday. It's um, funny, just so you know. It's not just a horror movie. It's not even a horror movie, actually. It's funny, and it's um, and you know, you can see me get killed in it. Not to be a spoiler, but uh, a friend. Uh, when I when when we did the film, I brought a uh, friend to the a test screening, and he loved the movie. But he said, "By the way, I think it's sort of common courtesy if you're going to be brutally murdered in a film to warn your friends beforehand." So I just thought I'd warn you. <laughs> okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you for classing me as a friend as well. I mean, I think it was uh, the film that Christian Bale. It kind of launched him into stardom, didn't it? I mean, uh, I read somewhere that was one of his main standout performances. That's really catapulted him through the ranks into the films that he's doing now. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was well known for his work in the movie Empire of the Sun. And but he was uh, maybe ten years old when he did that. And then he had done a few other films that you know he was known. But this one just. I mean, he went on to be. I think the next one was Batman, and then it was you know that's all she wrote. I mean, he just went on to do The Machinist and Terminator, and you know now he's you know Sir Christian Bale. I mean, he's you know he's uh, quite a figure. What what Christian Bale does next is of note always, so that's um, yeah. Mar Mary Hare and the director says, I can't even get him on the phone now. <laughs> <laughs> What was it like working with him? Because, I mean, I've heard very mixed stories. I mean, there, there was some sort of hiccup on uh, the Terminator Salvation set that was made into a very public sort of... Um, sort of share sort of posting videos on the internet of this rant that he went on. Is he a nice guy in real life? Was that just one moment where he was really stressed out? What was he like to work with? Um, he's amazing to work with. I mean, we had to do a scene that is a sex scene that turns into a murder scene. So, you know, you do get to know someone... Uh, when you do something like that, and he's he's perfectly lovely, the the um, and and just really talented and really professional and really just a, a good guy all around. Um, the the thing about that rant that's so interesting is that everyone I know in the industry 
who knows the person he was ranting at says every single person who's ever worked with that DP wanted to has wanted to give that exact rant for years that that the guy that he's ranting at was well deserved of a complete tirade so I feel bad for Christian and that's I'm feel bad for Christian he's doing quite fine but you know that people think people say to me all the time what was it like to work with Christian like I've heard he's a nutball and I'm like no actually he just cracked in a moment because somebody walked into a shot when he was working really hard and he just couldn't he just couldn't believe how unprofessional it was so he's actually a, just a super chill super professional lovely man who uh, lost his shit one day as we all have no, oh, fantastic. Well, yeah, I mean, everyone's human at the end of the day, and it would be great to, to speak to him sometime in the future, hopefully, if my work takes off into that sort of Hollywood <laughs> spectrum there. You never know. You never know. Now, uh, moving on to, like, friends of yours. I mean, you've got friends in your repertoire like Kevin Smith and Jane Lynch. Now, will you be calling on their mass marketing skills to uh, push the word out about this movie and calling in a few favors along the way? Um, this is a very modern problem that one has that I have, which is that, um, yes, Jane is my friend, and yes, Kevin is my friend, but you, you almost don't want to say, uh, there, the, or I should say, there's no polite way to say, hi, can I use you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I sort of, I, I more hope that people will, that people like Kevin and Jane will, will um, see what I'm doing and support without me actually, you know, putting my sad little hands out and saying, Help me, help me. Um, it's it's a it's a there's there's a an an uncharted there are uncharted waters of etiquette to be uh, managed here and uh, and I'm learning as I go. I have 30 more days to really get the hang of it. Um, I I did I reached out to Scott Mosier, who's uh, Kevin's you know longtime friend and producer, yeah. and he and he tweeted for me, um, but I'm sort of. It's just sort of, I mean, what, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, it's something that you do. It's, you know, just sort of putting yourself out there. I, you know, there is a kind of etiquette to it, right? I mean, you can tell when someone that you haven't spoken to in a while you suddenly sends you, you know, the link to their, you know, fundraising campaign. And you, you, you sort of say like, oh, great. Yeah, of course. I'm, you're using me. What, do you, what are your thoughts? What, are, what, what do you think is the, the appropriate way to behave? I mean, it all depends on, on the person and how well you know them. I mean, who knows? I mean, Jane and Kevin could be listening to this interview right now, in which case, um, hey, guys, my name is Sean. I'm great fans of yours. Um, my friend <laughs> Guinevere and our mutual friend Guinevere needs your help. Please uh, help speak to it and let's um, get funded. I mean, is anything like that. I mean, from one minute, I don't know these people, and I'm saying, can I have your help? The next minute, I've known them for ages, and I'm just asking for small favors. I mean, if you build up to it nicely, build a nice conversation, conversation for a, a short period of time so it doesn't s seem as much as though you're using them and you're only asking them and speaking to them because you need their help I would sort of build up a, co a conversation with them hi how have you been maybe meet up with them if you know them personally that well um, what are you working on oh, I'm just working on it Indiegogo like drop it into conversation nicely there but don't say hi Jane haven't spoke to you in about seven months um, I need some money uh, can I have all your money and all your followers yeah totally <laughs> exactly I mean that's never going to work and you might even lose friends that way so you don't want yeah. that at all so it's yeah yeah I mean just drop it into polite conversation and I mean who knows they could be listening so in that case uh, they should be on board by now if they are listening right now because it's a great <laughs> project um, I just want to wrap things up there Guinevere I mean I really appreciate you, you coming on the show it's been a real pleasure speaking to you about Creeps for everybody listening out there including Jane and Kevin of course please check out the, the Indiegogo campaign um, which I'll post a link in the description box um, I wish you all the success with the film Guinevere and thank you for joining us on the show Thank you, Sean.